Hey everyone, this is Jumps, and today I'll demonstrate how to create a mashup in Sony Vegas, mixing two tracks together to create one. This is explicitly a Sony Vegas tutorial, but you should be able to apply any of the functions I use here in other software, such as Audacity uh, or Fruity Loop Studio, whatever you guys use. This should work for those, but uh, uh, you may find my tutorial more useful if you're using the same software, but I'm doing it in Sony Vegas because that's what I specifically use. All right, so uh, with that being said, uh, what we're gonna be doing specifically is uh, I'm going to be recreating one of the mashups I've uploaded on my channel. Here we have one of the mashups I've created. Alright, so uh, we're going to be recreating this mashup from scratch in Sony Vegas Pro. And uh, this will hopefully help you guys with your own personal projects you want to do. Uh, I simply wanted to do this because many have asked me so in the past. So uh, I'm just going to be doing that now in present day. Alright, so what we have here is an empty Sony Vegas project file. And uh, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to drag both the tracks that I want inside of my project. Just drag them into the software. Uh, anywhere works. Timeline, project media space up here. If you drag them into your timeline, it'll automatically create audio tracks for you, but it's fine either or, because once they're in your project, you go to your project media tab here, you drag your audio files down below, and then it'll create these audio tracks for you. And uh, if you happen to uh, drag both tracks into the same uh, audio track, uh, that's no problem. All you would have to do is either drag the other track below it, and it'll create the audio layer, or you just right click to the side here and click insert audio track. So uh, pretty simple stuff. But uh, for this example, we want to have two audio tracks. Okay, so uh, we have both audio tracks now, but before we actually start mixing these tracks, I kind of want to demonstrate a few tools that we're going to be using uh, to create this mashup. All right, first things first, let's explain what waveforms are and why they're important. See these like, Wavelengths here. Okay, so these are waveforms, and uh, they represent the track's audio as it plays. Um, just so you can kind of get a better visual representation, uh, let me just drag this back to to like a smaller section of the track, a pretty small section actually. Let me get these five little spikes here in this like on these waveforms. So uh, as you can tell, there are like five spikes here, right? You're gonna hear five beats right now. Makes sense? See how it's visualized here in the actual audio um, track? One, two, three, four, five. So uh, that's a pretty simple example. Uh, if you get like more uh, chaotic tracks, like that are a bit more busy, uh, it might be harder to identify the waveform since everything is kind of sporadic. But um, eh, just for the sake of example, I'm glad I used a simpler track just to sort of let you guys know what these waveforms are what they mean and how you can interpret them. So with that out of the way, uh, let's let's uh, talk about pitch shifting. And uh, pitch shifting essentially is what it sounds like. You're shifting the pitch up and down using our plus and minus keys. So I'm gonna play this track at its original pitch. Here is me pushing the plus key a few times. One, two, three. that it's pitched up and uh, to do that you simply hit your plus key I can do it as many times as I'd like so yeah it's pitched up pretty high isn't it so now I'm gonna hit my minus key this is pitching down that makes sense um, yeah so those that's pitching up and pitching down and uh, if you want to actually check how many semi semitones uh, pitched up and down the track actually is, you right click your track, hit properties, and uh, you'll see a lot of information here. But what's really important is the pitch change, this right here. Make sure it is set to zero if you want it to be at its original pitch, which for our case, we want it to. So there we go. It's set to zero, you hit OK. It should be at its original pitch now. 
you have it. And uh, one more thing to keep in mind. Uh, when you do pitch shift your track, it's important that lock to stretch is not on. Because what this does basically is uh, um, if you uh, pitch shift your audio in any way, it will actually time stretch it. Um, it'll it'll speed up the track or slow it down. And uh, time stretching, I'll actually, that's actually what I'm gonna get into next. So uh, if you don't understand what that means, don't worry, you'll know in just a moment. But for now, we're just gonna set our track to its original pitch. All right, so the next thing we're gonna get into is time stretching. To do that, hold your control key and basically just drag the end of your track. And you notice how the waveforms are stretching and squeezing. Uh, yeah, this is, this is what, it, what is known as a time stretch. And uh, to demonstrate what it does, I will uh, show you some of the extremes. Let me let me squish this track like just ex like this. Like notice how the waveforms are very scrunched together. This means the track will play faster. And as you may hear right here, notice how the track's actually playing extremely fast. Yeah, that's that's what happens when you squish it like that. Uh, that's not what we want. But let me show the other extreme. I'm just going to stretch this out extremely far. And let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> uh, pretty uh, slow, isn't it? So actually, I'm just going to undo all those changes real quick. Uh, that seems good enough. Yeah, so I, I just hit the undo key until it was at its original uh, pace. But that is how you time stretch. And uh, now I'm going to show you guys what loop regions are, and loop regions essentially are like areas of the entire timeline, like portions that you want to loop um, using these two yellow handles. And how I got those yellow handles, I just clicked on this smaller track here, or uh, you double click on a region you want, and uh, any track in particular, it'll auto select it for you if you double click, and then you can manually change it from there. See these two yellow handles? This is the loop region. So if I wanted it to start like the middle of the track, then I can do that if I wanted to. All right, so uh, that's a loop region. And if you want that, if you want that loop region to repeat, simply click on this loop playback button here, and uh, it'll just loop indefinitely. All right, so that is loop regions. And now uh, uh, the final thing I kind of want to show you guys, I don't think we'd need to do this for this mashup, but uh, you have your volume controls here. And I simply wanted to bring this up because sometimes you'll find two tracks have differing like volume levels. Maybe a track is inherently louder than one another. Just simply turn down like the, the amount of decibels and uh, equalize the track, I guess, manually and uh, you'll be fine. Like, it, let's say this track were extremely loud, loud for whatever reason, I just send it to minus six decibels, and uh, it's much quieter than this track, as you can tell. Like, listen to this. Uh, it's just good to know. It's good to know. It's good practice. All right, so now that we've kind of gone through everything we need to know, let's actually get to uh, synchronizing these tracks, shall we? So, uh, for the sake of this example, we don't actually need to pitch shift because both tracks are already on the same key. I simply wanted to show you guys how to pitch shift because in other cases, you, this may not, it might not be this easy. You may need to pitch shift a track a couple semitones or so. And uh, yeah, that's why I showed you guys how to pitch shift if, in case your projects are not as seamless as this one. Because these tracks just happen to have very sim almost very similar tempos and kind of pitches. So I chose an easier example just for the sake of example. Um, so let's take a look here, shall we? Uh, so we talked about waveforms earlier. And uh, as you can tell, our first waveforms for both tracks are aligned, but the rest of them aren't. Notice how this waveform is far off from this one. This one is not lined up to this one. This one is not lined up to that one. That means the track is desynced. So what we want to do is kind of time stretch the track and make sure the waveforms are synchronized with one another. And you kind of just have to feel this out, but um, you'll get it in time. As you keep working on your project and you keep lining up waveforms, eventually you'll find the synergy.
So this looks pretty good to me. This waveform is pretty close. This waveform is pretty close. Let, let's kind of hear it. So I think that is actually what we want. Those are the, the waveforms we want aligned to each other. And you might be asking why I specifically chose the mystery dungeon track to pitch, um, sorry, to time stretch. And that's because I generally don't like time stretching um, music with vocals because it just sounds off to me, at least to me. That's kind of a personal preference, but if you're okay with stretching vocals, hey, you know what, go ahead, do your thing. That's totally fine. That's kind of just my personal preference, you know, like... That's how I feel about stretching audio. I like stretching the instrumentals or vocals, usually. All right, so uh, with that being said, let me continue stretching this out and kind of refining it a bit. So that's pretty synced. However, I don't like the way that the uh, Mystery Dungeon track starts because if you can't, uh, as you can tell, I don't know if you can, but let me just play this real quick. I feel like it's a bit, like, it's one beat, it starts one beat too uh, late. Essentially, what I mean by that is, uh, this first beat right here, this first waveform, it's kind of excess to me. Like, it, it feels like it's one beat off. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but let me just, let me just demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to uh, chop off this beat here. I'm just going to drag the beginning of the track to the second waveform, the second beat, and I'm going to drag it towards the beginning here. And I think that, sh that should sound a lot better. Let me just play this real quick. I think that's that's kind of a preference, right? Because, yeah, both tracks are already synced to one another, but I just felt like it was a bit off, in my opinion. So that was more so a personal change of mine. But regardless, uh, there's no wrong way of doing this. It's more so whether or not you can line the waveforms up and make sure that the tracks are synchronized all the way through. And um, as you keep stretching these tracks out to their original length, uh, as the tracks progress more, you'll notice that it it gets there's there's it's still desynced a bit. That's because uh, we only sampled the beginning of both tracks, and that's not a very good representation of whether or not they'll be synchronized as they go on longer. So as you can tell, uh, both tracks sound synchronized in the beginning. But as the tracks progress, um, you'll notice there'll be a slight desync. No and it becomes much more apparent as both tracks play. So to remedy this, you simply just kind of want to feel it out as the tracks play out. You want to time stretch as you see the desync. So notice how... Uh, there's like a desync here with these two waveforms. I'm just going to time stretch to match those just so it conforms to the other track. Uh, let's play that. And you kind of just want to feel this out generally. You keep lengthening both tracks until um, you're satisfied and uh, you're at the original length that you want it to be. So, for instance, I'm just going to drag uh, the Pell track all the way out to its original length. And uh, I'm not going to be dragging the Mystery Dungeon track to its original length because its original length is 30 minutes. And that is not the length we want. So I'm just going to trim this down to the Pell track. Or, uh, th these are basically my extents, the Pell tracks itself. So this is how long the entire track is going to be. So uh, I'm going to be working with that space. So let me just play somewhere random, see if it's synchronized. No yeah. It's pretty synchronized. A little more fine tuning. So I kind of just jumped uh, between different sections of the track. Um, if it's synced in the beginning and synced towards the end, then uh, you got yourself a perfectly synced track. Both uh, tracks have the correct um, alignment with the waveforms. 
see here, uh, the waveforms are pretty well conformed here. As you can see here, both waveforms are quite synchronized. And uh, towards the end here, uh, you'll see the same behavior, or at least relatively the same behavior. If they're close towards the end, then you got yourself a pretty damn well synced track. I mean, you can fine tune this as much as you want, but uh, it's gonna sound pretty good. All right, so now that we're finished creating the mashup here, um, we're going to render this as a MP3 or MP4. Um, you could use other formats. I generally like using MP3 for audio file formats and MP4 for video formats. So uh, here we have a video layer that wasn't there previously. This is simply so that I can show you all the rendering options, because if there's no video layer with anything inside of it, um, all the render options won't show up. So yeah, uh, once you hit render as, by the way, it's file, render as, these are your render options. Um, you have all your render options right here. And normally these like MP4, PNG, all these video formats would not show up if there were not a video layer with something in it. But uh, I just put it there as a placeholder so you can see all the options in front of you. Normally, when I upload to YouTube, I go to main concept AVC slash AAC and uh, hit the drop down arrow here, scroll down, and then I hit the Internet HD um, options here. I usually go 1080. Uh, you can go whatever format you want, or you can use any of these other formats. But if you, you're strictly uploading to YouTube, I would recommend either of these two. And uh, if you simply want to do an MP3 file, you would go MP3 audio, click the drop down there, and uh, just hit the audio quality that matches your source, um, your source audio files. Uh, which in my case would be 192 here. So I would just hit browse up here, put it in the directory I want it to be. Uh, I already have an audio file rendered here, but we're just going to replace that. And then uh, this box here, render a loop region only, uh, that it refers to this loop region here with the two yellow handles. Um, you can uncheck that if you want, but what that does is it renders the entire timeline, which actually isn't a problem here since the entire timeline is simply the mashup. But in case you didn't want to like render a specific like part of it, or you wanted to render like a very specific piece of this mashup for a preview purposes, then you could just select a part of your timeline with the um, loop region and uh, just hit render loop region only. It'll only render that portion. But uh, for this purpose, we're simply just going to render um, the entire timeline. So let's hit render here. And then once it's done rendering, hit open folder. You open the directory that the file rendered to. And uh, yeah, no, it, you should be able to play this audio file. Hold on. There we go. Click that. So yeah, this is the rendered audio file. It's it's now in a um, audio format, no longer in a project. For your own listening purposes or whatever else you want to do. But yeah, no, that is basically it. Um, I do want to thank those of you who stuck around for this long tutorial of mine. Um, I am willing to take criticism because I just want to improve the learning experience of our viewers and uh, yeah, no, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, voice them down below in the comment section. All right, well, you'll have a good one. Thanks for watching.